If someone asked you to think of a football game from the 90s, I'm guessing your first thought would probably be one of the ISS Pro games, FIFA 98 Road to World Cup, or maybe even Adidas Power Soccer. In 1995, however, well before any of those were around, actual soccer was released and, although it doesn't look it, this is one of the most important football games ever made. It was developed by Gremlin Interactive and these guys were one of the most ambitious game developers around at the time. They had already played a major part for many games released in the 80s, notably on the Commodore 64, ZX Spectrum and the Amstrad CPC. But now, as the fifth generation was dawning, they set out to make the most ambitious football game ever seen. Yeah, seriously, the hype is real. Actual Soccer was the first ever game to use a fully 3D modelled engine with fully 3D modelled players. And how this plucky little game from Sheffield achieved this was truly astounding. But whoa, 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 let's rewind and address the elephant in the room first. FIFA 96. Many people will remember this being released at around the same time and also being 3D, which it was mostly. The pitch was 3D modelled as well as everything else in the stadium. Weirdly though, EA opted to render their players in traditional 2D sprites rather than modern 3D polygons. Now, this might sound a bit weird, but there was good reason for this. EA didn't use a full 3D engine for FIFA 96 because the technology back then was still very much experimental. The consoles they were making games for before the arrival of the PlayStation and the Sega Saturn were still very popular, albeit not capable of handling 3D graphics. This meant that all of the time and money spent on exploring anything unconventional, like 3D graphic modelling, would have been a huge gamble, one that EA was never prepared to take. Now, as risky as it was for EA, Gremlin didn't have to worry about keeping Super Nintendo or Sega fans happy. The fifth generation was their opportunity to start a revolution, and actual soccer was their secret weapon. You can't start a revolution without challenges though, and one of the biggest challenges they faced was getting the players' movements right when on and off the ball. This was achieved by nicking three real players from the local football club, which just so happened to be Sheffield Wednesday, and hooking them up to motion capture equipment. Andy Sinton, Chris Woods and Graham Hyde, who all played for the Owls back then, showed Gremlin Interactive their best moves, which were all recorded and used as the player movements in actual soccer. This brings us neatly onto how the game plays, and it's not quite as simple as you may think. All of the passing, for example, is controlled by one single button. Short passes, long passes, and even crosses all share the same input. So, how are you supposed to know what to do? Well, there are these shapes below the player's feet, and these are called highlights. They change depending on the player's situation and they affect which actions are performed when a button is pressed. Triangle and circle don't really do much, they just show which player is selected. Square appears when the ball is crossed into the box and the star highlight appears when the player is in a position to perform a special shot or a skill move. Now, I must say one thing I did struggle with in actual soccer was the camera. Gremlin puts a system in place which allows you, the pro football gamer, to move the camera around freely without pausing the game. The problem I found with this feature is that it wasn't uncommon for the camera to go rogue and start moving around on its own. The camera would end up in a position where, unless you were looking at the radar, you were totally blind. This meant that you would need to manually adjust the camera angle fairly frequently, which wasn't ideal, particularly when under pressure. That being said, one thing I do find really cool about actual soccer is that you can play as seriously or as casually as you want and there are two game styles to cater for this. If you want to play a series of cup or league matches casually without having to think about too much, you could do so in arcade mode. If however you're looking for a more realistic experience, you could play actual soccer in simulation mode. This mode is for the hardcore fans who like to get stuck into the nitty gritty of all things football. All of the players stats can be analysed and picking which players make it into your squad really do affect the final score. One thing that is worth mentioning about actual soccer is that all of the teams are international. If you wanted to play with your favourite club team, well, you couldn't. 
Not until Actual Soccer Club Edition was released anyway. It came out in 1997 and everything in this game was exactly the same as the original apart from one big difference. The 44 international teams previously used were replaced with the 20 club teams who played in the 1996-1997 Premiership season. This also meant that if you was a Man City fan back then, you still wouldn't be able to play with your favourite team because Man City were in Division 1 for this season. Actual Soccer and its club edition were both incredibly successful. Between the pair of them, they sold well over a million copies, but Gremlin Interactive wasn't ready to stop there. This was only the beginning. After the first game's success, two more actual soccer games were released, as well as an array of other sports games including actual golf, actual ice hockey and actual tennis. These games were also incredibly successful, particularly actual ice hockey which went on to be the official game for the 1998 Winter Olympics. Actual soccer is where it all began though, but if we're being completely honest, it wasn't the best football game in the 90s. And that's okay because it was a world first and world firsts very rarely get the formula completely right. Being the first ever fully 3D modelled football game makes actual soccer the ultimate pioneer to every football game that came after it. You could argue that if Gremlin Interactive didn't do it first, someone else would have. But the fact is, no one else did. The technology was available for all the biggest gaming corporations at the time, but it was Gremlin Interactive who threw caution at the wind and stepped up to the challenge. Actual Soccer's introduction of 3D graphics opened the door for future advancements in football games. As technology advanced, more sophisticated and polished football games, particularly from companies like Konami, EA and Psygnosis emerged, leading to Actual Soccer's decline. Its role as a pioneer, however, remains undisputed and it will be forever remembered as the first ever football game released that fans could play in full 3D from the comfort of their own homes. Thank you so much for watching. My channel is getting incredibly close to levelling up and hitting 1000 subs, which, when it does, means the content that I'll be making for you amazing people will be levelling up too. As well as making short and sweet videos about awesome games like this, I'll be adding longer and more detailed specials to the schedule. These videos will cover subjects like the rise and fall of gaming developers, publishers and consoles. We'll also explore the many interesting game series back in the day that just seem to have vanished off the face of the earth. Like the actual sports series as an example, as well as much much more. If this sounds like fun to you, remember to hit the subscribe button and give that bell a little tap if you want to be notified about the latest videos. Now, if you was a fan of WWF wrestling back in the day, this video right here might be right up your street.